Okay, I think we can get started. Uh, so welcome to my presentation on what's next in PS Lab. Uh, I think we had a small introduction about myself. I've been an active contributor for the project since 2017. When I started this project as a GSOC student. And uh, now this is the second day of Force Asia Summit 2021. And we had a couple of presentations and workshops on PS Lab. By attending those, now you would have a broad idea about what this pocket size device do and how the software development is progressing through. Just a small recap on the journey so far. Uh, we started working on a hardware prototype somewhere between 2017 and 2018. Our first goal was to make the device as small as possible. So we made a prototype and tested the board made to follow the dimensions of Arduino Uno form factor. But the components were placed on both the top and bottom sides of the PCB. Once we shared the news about this new device among other developers, we received many good feedback from the community. Uh, that is regarding the manufacturing cost. We were to build a prototype by populating components on both sides, we'll have the board need to be run through the assembly twice. But this is something we can try to reduce by changing the design. So we changed the design. Uh, we had to run many tests and revisions to finally get PS Lab version 4. We call it PS Lab V4. All the components from bottom side were transferred to the top side. And uh, we had to enlarge the board to as big as Arduino mega form factor to get all this thing done. Because with the Arduino Uno form factor, it was very difficult to get everything on the top side. So this was okay for us. And this board, PS Lab V4, was first released at the Forsage Summit we had in 2018. We got many constructive feedback from users and that got us into developing the next version, PS Lab V5. So we had Vive prototypes built. We didn't release it to market at that point because uh, we need to have a few developers get their hands on a few of those and get their feedback. So it was great and we were finally able to make a flow connection between the new features we added to this new PS Lab V5 design. Uh, iterating on that, we got the new PS Lab with the enhanced features and many updates. The new PS Lab, PS Lab V6, we call it, comes as a much denser package with all the features it had in its previous versions. Uh, instead, in this new design, we upgraded the existing components from the early design and added many cool new features. Well, uh, let's start with connectivity. Early designs had a micro USB port to have a wired connection between a host computer and the PS Lab device. The new PS Lab board has a USB C port. It's the one we saw with the Alex videos. Uh, this enables us to get a higher power draw from from the USB cable and have a much higher speed in connectivity. There was a, in the, in the earlier design, there was a pin connect, pin opening for an ESP12 module. And uh, it would require a user to uh, solder a ESP12 module by themselves, which we found a bit impractical. So this was changed in the new design. We replaced this uh, ESP12 connector with an ESP01 connector. It's the same chip, but uh, ESP01 comes as a diff uh, separate module with header pins. So users can simply plug this board in without having to solder anything. And uh, that's not all. So we had a SPI interface to the new uh, Baselab V5 design, and the I squared C connectors were made compatible with the uh, groove, uh, groove sockets. 
groove sockets is becoming more like the standard in I2C connectors because many vendors keep on developing different sort of arrangement with the four pins, this uh, ground VDD, SDA, and SCL. So we wanted to be compatible with commodity devices as and sensors as much as possible while supporting advanced features PS Lab is offering. So apart from that, now there is a reset switch that is to restart the board in case if it's stuck or to help the uh, board to get into bootload mode for firmware upgrades. And the board also comes with a new uh, WS2812 RGB LED. And uh, apart from that, I worked a bit on the seal screen. Uh, just to get a bit of an eye candy, instead of the monophones, all these uh, usual circuits I using, I wanted PS Lab to stand a bit different. Now the phones are a bit sharp and it looking good. We were able to pack so many new features on top of existing ones because we moved to smaller components, smaller footprints actually. They were in fact better than the previous ones. Technology was developing, so new modules are coming out and we needed to keep up. So the voltage regulators were changed from big ICs to small QFN alternatives and the UART bridge we had earlier, which was a microchip MCP IC, it was quite big. So it was replaced with this uh, Silicon Lab CB210X UART bridge, which is quite famous these days with, uh, with this newer ESP modules and uh, many peripherals. So now the PS Lab V5 has this uh, UART IC. And uh, PS Lab can. Okay. Uh, PS Lab can function as a standalone device. The meaning is that uh, you don't need to have a computer or a mobile device to use the PS Lab as it was in the early designs. The new standalone mode allows PS Lab to be used as a data acquisition device. Such a data logging feature would be very useful in various outdoor experiments. Uh, say with a suitable waterproofing case, now you can leave PS Lab outside connected to a sensor and make it log the sensor readings until the battery or the memory card runs out. All these hardware changes need one other thing updated, that is the firmware. This is not the last hardware update we're talking about. So to make production faster and to roll out new updates in firmware, we implemented a bootloader. This bootloader, uh, because our microcontroller is based on a microchip peak architecture. So we had to base this bootloader uh, on their proprietary ECBL library. Uh, it was quite a hassle implementing this bootloader back then with the old uh, free compilers and IDs we are using. It was kind of hard. But finally, Microchip released a new version of ECBL library, enabling us to surpass all these challenges. So the compiler was working, everything was good. So that enabled us integrating this bootloader into the PS Lab for my ecosystem. But there's a little catch because users will need to install a, a separate application named Unified Bootloader uh, to upload this hex file with the firm, new, new firmware update for the PS Lab. And uh, I told that the new PS Lab comes with a standalone mode. That means it can act as a data logger. This uh, new firmware update enables the user to switch between the normal mode and the standard standalone mode. And normal mode is when you use the device plugged into a mobile device or a laptop. And the standalone mode configuration would be fetched from the SD card. Well, Android and desktop apps already have this feature implemented during the last stages of the year before. 
the users can specify uh, which instruments or sensor they need to have the data logger work with and what is the timing interval between each data logging and many other parameters specific to each of these instruments. This mode uses the real time clock to record timestamp and the logs will be saved on the micro SD card and you will have access to a comprehensive lo data log at the end. And uh, like I said, this is now the last update for PS Lab. We are researching on various microcontrollers that are cost effective and compatible with current features PS Lab is offering. The key idea is to go for a much open design, decoupling from proprietary IDs and tools program, because we experience that in first hand by developing it with the uh, uh, microchip. And uh, we have our hands on research with ARM based platforms to get this done. And uh, there, are, there are weekly meetings that anyone who is interested with PS Lab development could attend. And uh, if any of you are interested in joining hands with the development, please feel free to drop a message on in our Twitter channel. And uh, that's it from my side. And thanks for listening. If you have any questions, I can take them now. Okay, well, thank you very much, Padma. And uh, um, I see some questions here. Um, so, yes, uh, on the chat note. So, um, can you explore using Risk Five CPUs? Yeah, that's uh, the question about like going even more open. Yes, I guess that's somewhat um, related to FPGA. I guess. Uh, well, the thing with that is uh, that's something new for us I mean, for the development uh, we don't know how how to integrate that with the current ecosystem you're having with the uh... no, just let me read mm -hmm. Vehicle bonds. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was uh, talking about. I mean, uh, we were kind of in research mode recently uh, with uh, ARM based microcontrollers because now, right now we're using microchip and we have to rely on their compilers. Uh, they are they're using the free versions and they have quite the limitations. And some of the features don't work with, say, in Ubuntu. We have to switch between different operating systems to make them work. It's really hard the current development. So we were thinking that an ARM-based uh, alternative would be a better approach, but it requires a whole lot of uh, development process we have to uh, build up from scratch. So if we try to do that, we would need some more uh, resources in development wise. And uh, well, if any of you are interested, then feel free to join us. We can make it happen. Cool. Yeah. So I see like it was added here about like the seed um, yeah. components and uh, also DigiKey uh, or DigiKey, um, right? Um, so there's uh, quite a lot going on with Risk Five. But uh, then there is another question, and I think we also discuss this regularly in our meetings. Um, what is the plan after the current version? Any other chip? So it's gone in the similar direction as the previous one. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, I, that's the one I answered just now. Uh, with the oh. risk five CPUs, actually, I have not. I don't have much idea. Mm. 
Mm. But I guess that's somewhat related to FPGA. Yeah, I think we're definitely happy for people joining. Uh, Padma, I want to uh, ask you also, what is your personal vision? Uh, what could be achieved with PS Lab? We heard Alessandro today, who has a very big vision about really like uh, uh, changing science into like everything just must be open um, yeah. and uh, going into um, uh, biohacking and uh, yeah, biology topics. Mm. So um, spectrometer, of course, um, what's your personal vision? What, what do you think in what uh, direction can this project head and what kind of um, applications and um, instruments could be supported? Well, I believe uh, in a common market strategy, we need to keep up with the current development. We can't rely on devices that were built, say, five years ago. So we need, we actually need to have our devices up, updated and upgraded. And uh, my vision is to have PS Lab uh, come with a new IC. I mean, more like a much capable, not right now there are many capable microcontrollers out there in the market, say STM32, and then in NXP, there are plenty of them. And uh, I think if we can get them on board with PS Lab, then uh, that would really drive the way PS Lab is kind of helping the open science and scientists in a much uh, better way. That's how I feel it.